Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we have an exciting topic that will take your Excel skills to the next level. We'll be diving deep into the powerful index match function. If you've ever struggled with VLOOKUP but just want to be an Excel data lookup wizard, this video is for you. So let's get started. Now I know regular viewers of this channel would argue about index match while we have hailed XLOOKUP as the best lookup function there is due to its simplicity and ability to overcome the limitations of VLOOKUP. The most important reason you are watching this video is perhaps XLOOKUP is not available in your Excel. Yes, because XLOOKUP is only available with Microsoft 365, Excel 2021 and Excel for the web. So if you are using any of these, you are good. If not, well that's why I'm here for. So let's get started because we have a lot to cover and I'll try to keep it as concise as possible but this video is going to be a tad longer than usual. But stick around till the end and you won't be disappointed. I promise. Before we jump into the formula, let's understand what index match is all about. Index match is an advanced Excel function that helps you look up data in a table with incredible flexibility and precision. Unlike VLOOKUP, which has its limitations, index match lets you perform both vertical and horizontal lookups with ease. Now, you might be aware that index match is made up of two separate functions in Excel, index and match. We'll cover both of them quickly so you can understand how to use them together. Let's start with the index formula. You will get the Excel index function in two flavors, array form and reference form. When you want to return a value from a single range, you will use the array form of the index function. Like in this example here, we have some sales figures of two products, television and washing machines, spread over four years and five countries. Pretty straightforward and I'm sure you must have come across something similar in your job one time or the other. To use it as an array form, index has this syntax. Index within brackets, array, comma, row number, comma, column number, where array and row number are mandatory and column number is optional. Let's try this formula here. So let's say we need to know what was the sales of television in the year 2021 in the UK. So we begin with typing our formula as is equal to index for array. We choose this set here, C3 to C7. And if you wish to use absolute reference, you can press F4. For row, since UK is at the third place in our list of countries, we say 3 and press enter. And we get the value as 7732, which is at the third position in our array of C3 to C7. Pretty simple, right? What about if we want to know the sale of television in India in the year 2022? For this, let's add column number to the mix and see what happens. But it's not just anything in adding the column number to the end. Because remember, the array we have selected only contains one row, C3 to C7. And asking Excel to get data from another column will give a hash ref error. Instead, we expand our array to get the column 2. So our formula now becomes index. And this time we select our array from C3 to F7. Then since India is at the first row, we use 1 as row number. And our sales figures from 2022 for India are at the fourth column of this array. We use 4 and press enter. We get 48,942. That's the array form of index formula. Now let's move to the reference form. In the reference form, you can select two different data sets. In our case, you can select both from televisions and washing machines. Let me show you how. For the reference form, the syntax will be index, reference, comma, row number, comma, column number, comma, area number. Rest of it is the same as before. The new argument area number is used when our data sets are separated. Like in this case here where we have two separate data sets separated by a column. Excel considers them as one, two, three and so on and so forth. If nothing is mentioned, it's assumed as one. Let's explain this to you as an example. Let's say this time we need to find how many televisions were sold in the year 2021 in Germany. So we begin with index and since we are going to select both these tables, we will add another bracket for a reference argument 
and then select a range from C3 to F7, H3, K7. And close the brackets and again press F4 if you wish to make them absolute. That completes our reference argument. Now for the row, Germany is fourth on our list, so four. And since we are looking for sales from 2021, which is the third column, we use three and press enter. We get 35,803. What about if we need the same figure from washing machines? Here is where the area number argument comes into place. Since this is a second data set, we'll edit our formula to add the area number as two and press enter. And we get 34,003 as our result, which is spot on. About the area number argument, just remember that all the areas should be on the same sheet, otherwise you'll get the hash value error. That concludes our bit about the index formula. See how easy that was? Now let's move to match function, which is easier than this, trust me. Unlike index, match function doesn't return the values. It returns the relative position of that item in the range. Syntax is match, lookup value, lookup array, and match type. Here, lookup value is mandatory. It's the value that you want to match in the lookup array. Lookup array is also mandatory. It's the range of cells being searched. Match type is optional. It can be minus 1, 0, or 1. If match type is not mentioned, 1 is considered as default, which means match finds the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. When we use minus 1, match finds the smallest value that is greater than or equal to lookup value. And if we use 0, match finds the first value that is exactly equal to lookup value, and this is the argument we are going to focus on today. Let's quickly move to our example to help you understand this. As I said earlier, match only gives you the relative function of the lookup value. So let's say we need to find the relative position of 8223 in the year 2019 in television in our array. We'll write our formula as match 8223 is our lookup value. Our array is from C3 to C7. And we want an exact match, so our match type will be 0. Let's press enter and we get 2 as our result, which is the position of 8223 in our array. That's about it. That's all we need to know in the current context of using index match as a lookup function. I told you it was easy. Now to the task at hand, index match. We understand how these two seemingly different formulas come together to create magic. As we already know, in the index function, we specify the range of data we want to retrieve along with the row and column numbers. The match function, on the other hand, helps us to find the position of the lookup value in a separate column or row. Let's start with a simple example and work with just two rows for now. Here we have a data set, which is simple, and we have a drop-down list here, which have all countries listed, and we want the sales of the country in this cell. So we begin with our index function and write our formula as index for array we have to choose what we are looking for which is sales so it will be b2 to b6 then for row number we use the match function like this match then our lookup value is the country so we select a9 our lookup value is mentioned in this array here so we use a2 to a6 as our lookup array and since we need an exact match we use zero. Now close brackets twice and we are done. For this country, we have our value and if we want to change the country, we can do that by choosing another one from here. And a formula updates the values accordingly. Let me quickly explain how this happens and we will move to more complex examples. Remember, index will find the value and match gives you a relative position. So what we did was combine them in a way that we are using the match function to fulfill the row number argument for our index function. And that is all it is. So this formula, if we just use index function as is, for let's say India, it could have been index b2 to b6, comma 1. But that only gives us the result for one country we wanted to. And we have to literally specify what to return. So we use match to let it search for our lookup value in our list because match simply returns with a number. It easily fits in the row argument of our index formula. 
Now let's move to a bit more complex example. This time we have our television table with sales figures from the year 2019 to 2022 and against our list of countries. And this time we have to find the sales figures not just by the country but by the year too. Let's say we need to find sales figures of India for the year 2021. Let's select India here and 2021 here and write our formula as index and for the first argument we are going to select all the sales figures because we are looking for our sales figures eventually. So we are going to select from C3 to F7. Then go into a match formula and for its first lookup value we choose our country for our lookup array. We go here where countries are listed and finally choose zero exact value close brackets and now we have to work in the year also in a formula now, i'm pretty sure you are already getting an idea how to do that use another match function so this time we start with match and our lookup value is this value here e11 and our lookup array is this top row here where the ears are mentioned c2 to f2 and again use zero for exact match closing brackets twice and boom we're done Let's check our result. We choose India as our country and 2021 as our year and we have 7911 as our answer which perfectly matches our data set. So that's how you use index match with two variables. Let's kick it up a notch. This time we have our full data set but we have made it more complex by storing it like this. Now we have countries being duplicated and the items and the years. And we will take it to the next level by using three variables to get our data. If you are familiar with pivot tables, you can also do this by using pivot tables. And if you've watched our video on pivot tables, link of which is on the top and in the video description, you can very easily put all the variables like country, item and year in report filters and sales in the value filters box and you are done. But this ain't a video about pivot tables, is it? We already did that, so we are going to stick to index match and move forward. The way to get our result with three criteria is, here criteria 1, 2, 3 are the variables, country, item and year, and ranges are where they are located respectively. So let's write our formula here. We start by index, then for our array, we choose D2 to D41, because that is the place where our sales figures are. Then we move to match brackets 1 comma open brackets criteria 1 is country is equal to our country range is here so a2 to a41 close brackets multiplication symbol criteria 2 equals to this range here multiplication symbol criteria 3 equal to this range close brackets comma 0 and 2 closing brackets to complete our formula now comes an important part. Since this is an array formula, you might have to hold Ctrl and Shift before pressing Enter. But if you are using Microsoft 360 like I am, you can simply press Enter. And here we have our result. Now we can choose whatever combination of country, item or year, we will get our result. Now that we have done with three variables, can we do it with four? I don't know. Why don't you guys try this and let me know in the comments. I'll leave a link to the practice sheet in the description for you lot to check out yourselves. I'll leave you with this and finish this video now. I hope you've just unlocked the full potential of index match in Excel. You are now equipped with a powerful tool to handle data lookups like a pro. Practice, experiment and integrate index match into your workflow to boost your Excel skills. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all our Excel tutorials. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and happy spreadsheeting.